This is Antonio, welcome back to my channel, and who's ready for some fighting words? In this video, I want to do a fight breakdown for Terrence Bud Crawford versus Earl the Truth Spence. I've already done a video for Earl Spence, and this is me just evening the playing field, and now you'll get one for Terrence Bud Crawford. Really quick, if you like the videos, please take the time right now, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you could hit that thumbs up button, it really does help and support this channel. There's a lot more coming, there's a lot more videos coming, and there's a lot more breakdowns coming. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into this one. The first thing we're going to talk about when we talk about Terrence Bud Crawford is he's experienced. He's been around for a long time. Um, I remember there was a an old interview of Floyd Mayweather, and Floyd, you know, they was asked, they said, you know, who's, an, who's, a, who's that new young guy? And he said, Terrence Bud Crawford. He said, you guys don't know about him yet, but he's coming, Terrence Crawford. And he's experienced, been around a lot. And when you get a stamp like that from Floyd Mayweather, it's got to tell you something. Uh, also, undisputed champ, okay? He's not new to this. He's not new to being a champion. He's, he's done this before, and he's, quite frankly, around the corner from doing it again. Um, Terrence Bud Crawford is a finisher. Uh, precision puncher is what he is. Great counter puncher. Um, I feel like he works better, you know, being a counter puncher. Not to say that um, he's not great at leading the dance, but I just feel like he can see so many things at one time and he can do so many things at that one time that I feel like he plays better when he is a counter puncher. And I definitely feel like in this fight against Earl Spence, that's going to be his bread and butter because I do not see him leading that dance at all. Uh, Earl Spence is too big, too fast. Uh, too strong, too relentless, and cardio is through the roof. But, like I said before, Bud is a great counterpuncher. And what he'll do a lot of times is do things to make you react. So it doesn't necessarily be that you have to be leading the dance. It just means that he can do something to set you up or pretend to do something or make you think he's going to do something to lead you in and to make you commit to something, and then he'll take full advantage of it. Um, orthodox or softball doesn't really matter to Bud. Now, uh, a lot of people they'll, they'll say, "Well, you know, I can box with both sides." Yeah, that's true. A lot of people can do it, but not many people can do it in the moment. Not many people can be fighting softball and then switch to orthodox in that second and switch back to softball because the orthodox stance was better in that position. Not many people can do it like that. Most of the times, people will come out, you know, a round has ended, they come back out, and now they're doing orthodox, or they're, they're going to be southpaw for that round, and they're going to test it out, see how they're feeling, and see how their opponent is reacting to it. Terrence Crawford will do it like mid-sequence, mid-combination. That's what makes him special, doing things like that. When, when we're talking about things like that, that's like Roy Jones-level type stuff. So that is special and that is unique in itself. Uh, let's see. And, and one more thing on that. He can do it at any time. At any time. That's another thing that's unique about him. Um, so normally in the beginning of his fights, basically TC, Terrence Crawford, he likes to take his time. You know, And basically in that time, what he's doing is computing everything. Uh, he's getting your timing. He's checking your cadence. He's looking at their feints, and he's just trying to figure out, all right, what is he, what is he biting on? What isn't he biting on? Uh, what's he doing? You know, how's he stepping? Is he sidestepping? And does he jerk before he throws his white right hand? What exactly is he doing? He's just gathering data. And then once he begins to loosen up and warm up and, and you know, as the rounds go by, basically, a lot of guys will just, you know, kind of condition themselves to the guy in front of them. But what he's doing is, He's taking it a little further and, and being advanced where he's selecting which punch is best for you. Because what I'm going to do for that guy is not going to be great for you. Just because you're both southpaws doesn't mean that's going to work on you. So he's seeing what's going to work in terms of punch selection. And, you know, where in a body am I going to target? That's what he's doing. Um Listen, Terrence Crawford has a very wide range of weapons. Speaking of targeting the body, he has a very wide range of punches. But it's not just so much that he has a wide range of punches. It's the creativity in those punches. 
He has a shovel hook that isn't a, a true shovel hook because it's almost darn near completely extended and he can shoot it from far out. Terrence Crawford has long arms, great for boxing and great for, you know, fighting at a distance and he can shoot it from far out. And you would think, well, he's not getting any popper on, on, on those punches, but he does. And he gets guys down from those. Um, uppercuts. Uppercuts, I truly believe, are going to be one of the themes for this fight. Uh, Terrence Bud Crawford is great at uppercuts. And he's great at countering with an uppercut. He's great at leading with an uppercut. They can come out of anywhere. He's very spontaneous with his uppercuts. You can tell a lot of times those things are not planned, or, but they are perfectly timed and perfectly placed. Um, shorthand overhands. So your, your typical overhand is coming over like this. But what he'll do is he'll bend it and it's coming downward. Now, who does that remind you of? Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. He'll do the same thing. And it's more like a, just a hammer just coming down on you. Uh, let's see. Heavy hands. Listen, what Terrence Bud Crawford hits, Terrence Bud Crawford hurts. Uh, is he going to throw a ton of punches in a round? Probably not. But, like I said, punch selection. And he targets certain parts of the body. That's important. That's another reason why you punch in sequence. Because if you're punching at me and I punch back at you, and we're punching darn near at the same time, well, then you're open and you're so focused on what you're doing. You've already been, you're already committed to this punch that you're, that you're lunging at me. You don't have time to, to, to suck in the wind or anything like that. When you get hit, you get hit. And he's great at doing that. He's great at uh, punching in the sequence. Um, he can get you down. He can get you out. That's one thing about Terrence Bud Crawford. He's a finisher. Uh, listen, Earl Spence has been saying man down for years, but he ain't put a man down in years, all right? And I know what you're going to say, or oh, you, you put Sean Porter down. Sean Porter jumped right back up within seconds. But sure, you put Sean Porter down. And that was only because Sean Porter was off balance trying to hit Earl Spence. Um, no wasted punches were Terrence Bud Crawford. Like I said, he's not going to throw a lot of punches, but he's not going to waste any punches. And there's a difference, you know? And that's the, one of the reasons why he's going to be able to keep his cardio in this fight, which is going to be another big factor in this fight. Because Earl Spence can go. He's 100 miles an hour for 12 rounds. He can go. And with Terrence Crawford not throwing a lot of punches, he can reserve energy. And he's going to need that energy. Because I do believe this is going to hit later rounds. Um, I, I definitely believe it's going to hit later rounds. But um, he's going to need that energy. He's going to need, need those uh, reserve sources. Um, great footwork. Great, great footwork. Very light. Very uh, agile on his feet. And he can fight backing up, he can fight from side to side, and he can lead the dance. He can bring it to you. He can go in the telephone booth and fight, and he can fight you from a distance. You just tell him how you want it. Um, he's great at dictating fights. He's great at uh, saying where the fight will take place. He's great at lining guys up. When I say lining guys up, I mean, you know what? We're going to have our fight over here. We're not going to do it over here. I'm going to need more space, and I'm going to need you over here to do that. And he's great at lining guys up. Uh, let's see. But is very comfortable at range, all right? I, I think he's very comfortable at range. I think in this fight, this I personally think he would be safer at range in this fight. Although, I think if he fights Earl Spence's fight, Earl Spence is going to eat a lot of uppercuts if, if he fights Earl Spence's fight. And granted, the way Earl, fight, Earl Spence fights, Bud might not have a say-so in where they fight. He just knows that they're going to fight. Earl, uh, Earl already said it. I'm stepping as soon as I step in that ring. Let's see. Um, hmm. I think that... Let me go back to the uppercut. I think the uppercut's going to be a major factor in this fight um, for, for a few reasons. Um, one, because Earl's going to be up in his face. Earl's going to be big. Earl's going to be strong. And Earl's going to be throwing a lot of punches. Um, Earl's going to want to close that, that gap really, really quick. You know, there's a lot of speculation about Bud's chin, and I feel like Earl really wants to test that. And I feel like he wants to test it early. And I think that uppercut's going to play a major, major, major factor. And if I am to say something early and say a knockout, and I would definitely say if it's going to be a knockout, I would definitely say a knockout for, for Bud Crawford. Um, I think it would come by way of uh, uppercut and something that Earl doesn't see because he's throwing... 50 punches in one sequence anyway. He's not going to see that one uppercut slide out of nowhere. 
And I could see that happening. That's just one of the possible scenarios that I can see happening. Um, so I talked about a lot of things that um, Terrence Bud Crawford does well. Now I think it's only right for me to talk about a lot of the things that Earl Spence can exploit in Bud Crawford. Uh, listen, Earl Spence is a lot bigger. Earl Spence is strong. Earl Spence has crazy cardio, um, a crazy punch output. Earl Spence is extremely durable. Like I've only ever seen Earl hurt once. And then, like, but he recovered within the sequence. And that was the Kell Brook fight, you know? And he, he recovered and fought back, fought Kell off of him. Uh, let's see. Um, listen, one punch is not going to be enough to, to, to slow Earl Spence down, to get Earl Spence off of you. Um, that's not going to work with Earl Spence. He, dude is truly a tank. Um, the pace of this fight. Listen, Earl Spence... Nine times out of 10, probably 10 times out of 10, dictates the pace of a fight. Um, and this, I don't feel, is going to be any different. I think Bud is going to have to bring all his tricks out of the bag in this fight. And one of the reasons why I think he's going to have to bring all his tricks out of the bag is because the speed and the pace and the output of the punches that are coming from Earl Spence. And if he plays his cards right, I really think he can exploit Bud in his cardio, Earl Spence. Uh, in his punch outs, output, Earl Spence. I think he could really exploit Bud because Bud isn't going to throw that many punches. Now, if you're not going to throw that many punches, you're going to have a problem. Also, uh, Earl Spence likes to start early. Like I said earlier in this video that uh, Bud likes to compute and take his time to gather his data. Earl Spence is not going to give you the chance to do all that. So you better figure it out in your training camp because once we get in there, I'm stepping. Let's see. Um... Earl's a real athlete. I think outside of Sean Porter, that Bud hasn't faced a true athlete. He's fought a lot of fighters, but he hasn't fought a true athlete. And outside of Sean Porter, this is his greatest test versus, you know, uh, Bud Crawford versus an athlete slash boxer. And that's important. Why? Because I mentioned it early. Uh, agility, uh, reflexes. Things of that nature, that caliber, um, and also a mindset. You know, a, a fighter has one mindset and an athlete has another mindset. It's competition, okay? So it does matter. Uh, also, uh, Earl Spence can box. Earl Spence can fight. And the longer the fight goes and the more you make him angry, it's going to dictate which one of those guys come out. But he can do them both. And I think this is the first time in a long time, if not just the first time, where I feel Bud will be fighting a boxer slash fighter. That's another difference. Uh, let's see. And it has been, you know, in question for some years, Bud's chin. And I think if ever there were a perfect opponent to, to test Bud's chin, it would be Earl the Truth Spence. So overall, let's see. Bud, let's see. Um... I think Bud Crawford's going to give Earl Spence some real problems, some real, real serious problems and make him answer a lot of questions about himself. Bud has a very high IQ, which is why I can see him winning. Um, Bud has various ways of fighting, which is why I can see him winning. He can fight in a telephone booth. He can fight, you know, from distance. He can fight circling this, the, 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 uh, the ring the whole night. He can fight on his feet. He can fight backing up. He can do so many things. He has so many levels of defense. That's another thing. He, he doesn't always show you the same defense as well. Uh, let's see. Um, Bud uses your strengths against you. And let's face it, Earl Spence is extremely predictable. So you don't think that Earl, that Bud Crawford is not going to be able to set traps for Earl Spence? He definitely will. He definitely will. The question is, you know, can Earl Spence soldier through those traps? That's the question. Uh, let's see. I already said Bud is a finisher. We all know that. Um, Bud has a mean streak. And that mean streak is a part of him always being doubted and always being the, the, the odd man out. He just now made it to the party fighting the uh, PBC fighters. And everybody for many years are saying that he's scared of Earl Spence and you know Earl Spence can beat him. And it's like he never really gets his just due. And I think carrying that chip on his shoulder is going to give him extra oomph he needs in training camp and in the actual fight. So... Overall, I think this is going to be a great fight. I think Bud Crawford has everything that he needs in terms of IQ, in terms of his physical abilities, and in terms of what he feels in his heart to get the job done. 
So I will definitely be looking forward to it. And pretty soon I will be dropping my prediction video, but it's still a little too far out. But um, those are my thoughts. Drop your thoughts down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. As always, please like, please share, please subscribe to this channel.